T-Sites and Finivision X-Series oscilloscopes offer a broad range of power-related measurements with the power measurements option. This video is part of a series of several short videos on specific power supply-related measurements. Here we show a simplified schematic of a switch mode power supply along with a list of measurements that can be performed to fully test and characterize it. In this video demonstration, we'll focus on performing a control loop response measurement, which is highlighted in green here. This particular measurement is often called a Bode plot measurement to test the stability of the closed loop feedback network of power supplies. A power supply is actually an amplifier with a negative feedback control loop as shown in this diagram. This means that although you may think of a power supply as a DC amplifier, it actually amplifies AC to react to changes in output conditions, such as load changes. To perform this test, we must inject an error signal over a band of frequencies into the feedback path of the control loop. The resistive divider network of R1 and R2 is the feedback path in this diagram. To inject an error signal, a small resistor must be inserted into the feedback loop. For our experiment, we'll be using a 5 ohm injection resistor, which is insignificant in comparison to the series impedance of R1 and R2. We will also need to use an injection transformer so that the AC disturbance signal is isolated or floating and doesn't induce any DC bias. The measurement system, in this case our oscilloscope, measures AC voltage levels at the top of the feedback network as well as at the V out and computes the gain as 20 log V out over V in at each frequency within the swept band. Although this measurement is typically performed using a low frequency network analyzer, it can also be performed using a Keysight Infinivision X-Series oscilloscope. The built-in waveform generator, along with the power measurements option, makes this frequency response measurement possible for the first time in an oscilloscope. For our demonstration, we'll be testing a DC to DC linear power supply evaluation board from PicoTest. At the bottom of this photo, you can see the BNC cable from the scope's waveform generator output connected to the input of the injection transformer. The output of the injection transformer, which is now isolated, is connected across the 5 ohm injection resistor. Proper probing is very critical. We've got to use one-to-one -one probes so that we can get maximum sensitivity out of our scope to measure very low-level AC signals. And we've got to use very good probing ground techniques so that we don't pick up noise or interference. In this case, I'm using solder-in probe sockets rather than using standard ground leads, which really act like antennas when you're attempting to measure, measure very low-level signals. Now that we've got everything connected properly, let's start making measurements. We'll begin with a default setup so that you can see how you set this up from scratch. Next, we'll go into the Analyze menu. And there's actually an Analyze button on the front panel to get here directly. And then select the Power application. If I select Analysis, you can see a list of all the power-related measurements that you can perform on this scope on your power supply if the scope has the, the power option. Now we're going to select the control loop response. If you're interested in these others, we have videos on all of them as well. So let's select control loop response, Bode. Next, we'll go into the signals menu, and this gives us a diagram similar to what I showed before, showing us how to connect our probes. And what I have is connected to channel one, I've got a one-to-one -one probe, and it's going to the V endpoint, which is the top of our resistive divider network. And connected to channel two of the scope, I have another one-to-one -one probe, and the default here is channel three, so let's change it to channel two. And on both of these, I have very good grounding techniques. Next, let's go into the settings menu so that we can define our test parameters. We can define the start frequency, the stop frequency, in which case I'm just going to use the defaults 100 Hertz up to 20 megahertz. This may be actually beyond what you need to test, but we'll show it anyway. And then we have our minimum Y plot and our maximum Y plot. 
and I'm going to change this to uh, minus 40 dB and a maximum of plus 40 dB. That will give us a little more resolution on our plot. And then last, we can set our amplitude of our disturbance signal. And I'm going to set it to 130 millivolts. However, this is not a, is what is actually going to be applied across the uh, injection resistor, which remember is 5 ohms. This is what is applied to our isolation or injection transformer. That transformer steps it down, and the actual input level across that injection uh, resistor is going to only be about 12 volts peak to peak. At this point, we're all set and ready to uh, take a control loop response measurement. To begin the test, I'll simply press Apply. The scope will automatically turn on AC coupling on both channels, uh, attempt to optimally scale both of them, and uh, what you can see here, the yellow waveform is the input voltage level at the top of the uh, uh, resistor divider network. We're at one millivolt per division. This is an extremely small level signal, and so it's also using eight averages to dig this out of the noise floor. Uh, it's going to become larger, and eventually the, uh, the output, the, the green signal, is going to become small. The purple waveform you can see is the plot of the control loop response. Uh, the higher frequencies you go, here you can see it stepping up. We're getting up there about 5 kilohertz. It, it uh, speeds up quite a bit. It looks like we just crossed the uh, 0 dB crossover point. Now, it looks like it's a constant frequency, but the, the time base is actually changing at every test frequency. Now toward the end here you're going to see at the higher frequencies we're kind of in the noise floor of the scope but then we uh, it, it goes a little wacky up here but as I mentioned earlier we're probably testing beyond where we should be testing. Now that the measurement is complete the scope automatically turned on the cursors and tracks them to the uh, Bode plot, the purple waveform, and so we can make measurements at any frequency. If I slide over here, this is approximately the 0 dB crossover point. Let me see if I can get that as close as possible, right about there. That occurred at about 7.167 kilohertz, where things went a little wacky, was out here at about 12.6 megahertz. Now this is an important point here, the 0 dB crossover point. At this point, let's measure the phase margin at the 0 dB crossover point. To do that, first of all, I'm going to go back into the time domain. I'm going to press Run. I'm going to turn off my math waveform, and I'm going to turn my generator back on. So here it is running at the last frequency that it tested, 20 megahertz. I'm going to change that to 7.167 kilohertz. Change my time base. Get everything on screen. Rescale the vertical of each. And at this point, I can make a phase measurement. So I'll go to measurements. Select phase from 2. I missed it. 2 to 1, add measurement, and you can see we have a phase margin at this particular frequency, the 0 dB crossover point of approximately 66 degrees. As mentioned at the beginning of this demonstration, this short video was part of a series of several short videos on specific power supply related measurements. To learn more about InfiniVision X-Series oscilloscopes and how they can help you test and debug your power supplies, contact your local Keysight authorized distributor and ask for a demonstration. Thank you.